everyone, my name is Zara Spencer. I'm 14 years old and I'm a creative explorer. Happy Read Aloud Day. Today, we are going to be reading what I think is the most interesting part of the pearl. So, let's get started. Kino, in his pride and youth and strength, could remain down over two minutes without strain, so that he worked deliberately, selecting the largest shells. Because they were disturbed, the oyster shells were tightly closed. A little to his right, a hummock of rubbly rocks stuck up, covered with young oysters not ready to take. Kino moved to the next hummock, and then, beside it, under a little overhang, he saw a very large oyster, lying by itself, not covered with its clinging brothers. The shell was partly open, for the overhang protected this ancient oyster. And in the lip-like muscle, Kino saw a ghostly gleam, and then the shell closed down. His heart beat out a heavy rhythm and the melody of the maybe pearl shrilled in his ears. Slowly, he forced the oyster loose and held it tightly against his breast. He kicked his foot free from the rock loop and his body rose to the surface and his black hair gleamed in the sunlight. He reached over the side of the canoe and lay the oyster in the bottom. Juana steadied the boat while he climbed in. His eyes were shining with excitement. But in decency, he pulled up his rock and then he pulled out his basket of oysters and lifted them in. Juana sensed this excitement, and she pretended to look away. It is not good to want a thing too much. It sometimes drives the luck away. You must want it just enough, and you must be very tactful with the god or gods. But Juana stopped breathing. Very deliberately, Kino opened his short, strong knife. He looked speculatively at the basket. Perhaps it would be better to open the oyster last. He took the small oyster from the basket, cut the muscle, searched the folds of the flesh, and threw it in the water. Then he seemed to see the great oyster for the first time. He squatted in the bottom of the canoe, picked up the shell, and examined it. The flutes were shining black to brown, and only a few small barnacles adhered to the shell. Now Kino was reluctant to open it. What he had seen, he knew, might be a reflection, a piece of flat shell accidentally drifted in, or a complete illusion. In this gulf of uncertain light, there was more illusions than realities. But Juana's eyes were on him, and she could not wait. She put her hand on Coyotito's covered head. Open it, she said softly. Kino deftly slipped his knife into the edge of the shell. Through the knife, he could feel the muscle tighten hard. He worked the blade lever-wise and the closing muscle parted and the shell fell apart. The lip like flesh writhed up and then subsided. Kino lifted the flesh and there it lay, the great pearl, perfect as the moon. It captured the light and refined it, and it gave it a silver incandescence. It was as large as a seagull's egg. It was the greatest pearl in the world. Thank you for reading aloud with me today and happy Read Aloud Day. Bye.